morning yogis. Happy Friday to everyone. I'm Angie with Harmony Yoga and I've been leading you through about a 30 minute yin practice today. So with yin, yin is typically a more grounding practice. We take more time in each posture, anywhere from 30 seconds to up to five minutes, depending on where you need to be to release your body. And it's a really nice way to go deep within. Let the mind be still, the breath breathes into the body, and you just allow yourself to move deeper into these postures. So sometimes as you give yourself the time to move into these postures, it can be amazing and sometimes a little bit intense. So I want you to find your level of intensity today and really work through it, breathe through it, let the body release with the breath. So we'll be moving through a really nice yin practice today. And a couple things to see if you would like to add to your home practice would be a couple of blocks. If you don't have blocks, books, even Tupperware stacking can work for creating some elevation or height. Also have a strap. If you don't have a strap, a belt, even a piece of string could work. And then one more thing to have would be a small lap blanket, Indian blanket, yoga blanket if you have one. But again, if you don't, a small lap blanket would work as well. So just to start this practice off really nice, I'm just going, going to go ahead and read something from um, one of the books that I like to read to my classes. So I'm going to read to you today, just a little something to start our practice today. Earth teach me, earth teach me quiet as the grasses are still with new light. Earth teach me suffering as old stones suffer with memory. Earth teach me humility as blossoms are humble with beginning. Earth teach me caring as mothers nurture their young. Earth teach me courage as a tree that stands alone. Earth teach me limitations as the ant that crawls on the ground. Earth, teach me freedom as the eagle that soars in the sky. Earth, teach me acceptance as the leaves that die each fall. Earth, teach me renewal as the seed that rises in the spring. Earth, teach me to forget myself as melted snow forgets its life. Earth, teach me to remember kindness as dry fields weep with rain. I only went out for a walk, but decided to stay a while until sundown. For going out, I found I was actually going in. So let's go ahead and start on our back today. And if you do have a blanket, let's go ahead and take that blanket and fold it just to create a little bit of elevation. We're gonna be placing this blanket underneath the thoracic spine. So for women, it would be about along the broad line or for men, it's about the midsection of the, of the upper back. So we'll go ahead and place the blanket on your mat or on the floor, depending on what you have in your practice today. And we'll just go ahead and come onto our back. So make sure that the blanket is right in that midline. This gives just a little bit of elevation to the chest. And then the legs can be extended out you can bend the knees. You can place the feet mat distance apart and let the knees fall together. This takes a little bit of pressure off the low back. So if you have any low back pain, this can feel good. You, as you extend the legs out, you can also place a roll, another roll of blanket or some support underneath the knees. And then the last option would be to just bring the soles of the feet together and allow the knees to gently fall out to the side. So coming into a bound angle if that feels good. So take a moment here and then find what feels best in your body. And for me, I think I'm just gonna extend the legs out. That feels really good to my body today. Begin to allow the eyes to soften and close and make sure that you have just enough height to build because we're gonna be working on opening up the lungs today. And you can try bringing the arms up overhead. That might feel really good, opening up through the upper chest. And just take a moment here. If that doesn't feel good, you can let your arms rest at your sides. So just take a moment here and just begin to lie in stillness. The eyes can remain open if you're just kind of coming into your practice. So if you're ready to begin to allow the eyes to close, you can begin to symbolically close the eyes, closing off outside distractions. Just take a moment of stillness. And then once you've found that space, I want you to begin, if your arms are overhead, I want you to begin to bring one hand on the lower belly and one hand on the heart. I want you to find natural breath in the body. So just follow the natural rhythm of breath. 
And as you begin to follow the natural rhythm of breath, begin to encourage your breath to move a little deeper into the bass lungs. Let the breath drop down to where your hand is in the lower abdominal. As you inhale, feel the expansion lungs from side to side, front to back, top to bottom. Draw the breath upward, reaching the heart space, or feeling the hand at the heart space. Pause here. Love, kindness, and compassion for yourself and others. And audibly release the breath, let it go. Again, as you inhale, let the breath drop a little deeper into the base of the lungs, expanding the lungs from side to side, front to back, top to bottom. Draw the breath upward to the heart space. Love, kindness, and compassion for yourself and others. And as you release the breath audibly, I want you to share that love, kindness, and compassion with the world. So as we're drawing fresh new life into the body, love, kindness, and compassion for ourselves, we're also sharing that same sensibility with the world. So we're creating more vibration, more vibrational energy, more love. And the world needs just a little bit more love at this moment. So really knowing that we are all connected, we're all experiencing life together as one. So let's share this world together, breathing in the power and the positivity into the heart space. And as you release the breath, sharing love, kindness, and compassion with the world. I want you to go ahead and move through about three more rounds of this belly breathing. And belly breathing is really good at bringing you into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is a rest and digest. So it allows our bodies to relax, our muscles to relax, our minds to relax, and be more open and receptive to our environment and our world. Last three, last two, and last breath here. If you'd like to set an intention for your practice, I invite you to place palm to palm compression to heart space. The palms can be facing upward or they can be reaching toward your body. So if that feels good in your body, you can begin to bring the hands in prayer position. As you bring the hands in prayer position, take a moment here of reflection. If you'd like to set an intention for this practice, for your day, for the weekend, now's an opportunity to do so. And an intention is anything meaningful to you that gives you focus, determination, whatever it is that you're needing, it's something your mind can always go back to if you begin to lose focus for any reason. We'll take three more breaths at heart space. Each inhale, drawing the power and the positivity of your attention. Breathe deep. And as you release the breath, sharing that same positive vibration with the world. So we draw in the positive, we release the positive. Last three, last two, and last breath. Let's go ahead and release the hands. We'll go ahead and begin to release that blanket. So we'll go ahead and set the blanket to the side. We're going to come into a full body stretch. So reaching the arms up overhead, extending long with the fingers and the toes, and really opening up the body. We'll take one more big, beautiful breath here, and as you exhale, we'll begin to draw the knees into the body, create a little bit of release from side to side or front to back. So just a little bit of time of movement. So as I move through a yin practice, I'd like to create just a little bit of movement in between those longer held postures. Go ahead and release the feet to your mat. The feet are about hip distance apart. So we're going to begin to cross the right leg over the left. We're going to place your hand on the inner thigh, and you can help to gently guide it open and close. So imagine you're opening and closing that knee, creating movement in the right hip. So hinging through the right hip joint. The next time your right knee falls out to the side, go ahead and pause here. And if this is where you are in your practice, that's okay to stay here. If you want to add more, begin to reach your hands in between the thighs, interlacing the hands behind the back of the left knee. Right elbow moves into the bend of the right knee. And you can start here with the knee bend. And in time, I want you to gradually begin to allow that elbow to work that right hip open. Tailbone is rooted, and breath continues to flow through the body. Now you can stay here. If you want to begin to extend the left leg up, creating a number four, that's kind of a nice space to be. We've got a few rounds of breath here as you just allow the right hip to open and release. Breath is slow and steady, and you can continue to breathe into the body. You can say over and over your intention if you need to. You can also come up with any other mantra that would call to you today. So again, breath and body move together. Mind begins to become still and just observing your body today in your practice. Last three, last two, and last breath here. Let's go ahead and mindfully bend that left knee and release down. We're going to keep the right knee crossed over the left. We're going to bring the arms out to the side, either extended out or in cactus. 
We're going to inhale, and as you exhale, you're going to allow the sole of the right foot to fall to the left side of your mat. Head, neck, and spine stay nice and neutral. And if you want to add more to your practice, you begin to draw out through the right knee to create just a little bit more opening in that right hand. So I'm going to stay here again for a few rounds of breath. Heart space is continuing to open. Breath is slow and deep. So really letting the breath each and every time, consciously allowing the breath to drop deeper into the base of the lungs. If you want to add a little bit more to your practice, you can take your right hand and reach for your left ankle, coming into cat pulling its tail. So you can come into more of a pretzel pose if you choose to. So it depends about your level of flexibility and how deep you want to go with your practice. If you want to add just another element, you can also bring your gaze across the body. So the knees are falling to the left and your gaze is falling to the right. Last three, last two, and last one. Let's go ahead and pause at center. And then we'll begin to take the legs back to center and uncross. Let's set the feet mat distance apart. And let's take a moment or two to windshield wipe from side to side. So creating a little bit of movement in between those longer held postures. And then once you're even on both sides, we'll go ahead and realign the feet back to center. We're going to go ahead and bring the arms alongside our bodies. And this time we'll cross the left leg over the right. We're going to hinge that left joint, drawing the knee toward the body in a way just to create a little bit of lubrication and, and blood flow into the left hip. The next time your left knee falls out to the side, go ahead and pause here. Then you can stay here in your practice, or if you want to add more, you can reach your hands in between the thighs Interlace the hands behind the bend of the right knee, placing the elbow, the left elbow in the bend of the left knee. So as the left elbow moves to the bend of the left knee, you're helping to draw that knee away from the body, opening it through the left hip. Tailbone stays rooted, and again, you can extend the right leg up if that feels good, making a big number four. Get about three more rounds of breath here. Last two. And last one. Mindfully bend your right knee and release down. We're going to take that twist onto the other side. So bring in the arms out to the side, either extending out directly from the shoulders or coming into a cactus arm. As you inhale, creating space. And as you exhale, allow the sole of the left foot to fall to the right side of your mat. So we'll start here, and if you want more activation, now if the foot doesn't come all the way to the floor, you can bring the floor up to you if you need to place a blanket or a block or a piece of tupperware if you don't have a block, whatever you need to do in your practice. And if you want to add more to that hip, you can draw out through the left knee to create more activation on the left side of the body. I'm going to stay a while here, just letting the body open with the breath. So in the end, it's very slow, mindful movements not rushing through any part of the practice, but really savoring each and every part of the opening as we move into deeper and deeper stretches. And if you did so on the other side and you want to add more, you can reach the left hand to the right ankle, coming into just a little bit more opening. Also, you can bring your gaze across the body, looking over to the left side of your mat as your knees fall to the right. Last three, last two, and last one. Let's go ahead and release. Go ahead and bring the legs back to center, uncross, and then we'll go ahead and mind play windshield wiper from side to side. And then once you're even on both sides, we'll go ahead and bring ourselves back to center. We're gonna draw the knees into the body, create just a little bit of rocking motion side to side and front to back. Now, in order to come up onto your mat, you can either roll to your side and press up, or you can just begin to rock and roll until it brings you up into an upright position. So again, finding those movements that are best for your body today. And as we come into an upright position, we're gonna to begin to open up through the quads just a bit. Make a nice stretch across the quadriceps. So in order to do that, we're going to start with a block, and you might find that you have a pillow or even a bolster, 
or something that you can use to stack. So if you are working through any injuries and you know that this is not the best part of your practice, then you can just come into a seated posture. But we're gonna, for the rest of us, we're gonna go ahead and come into this position. So I'll go ahead and show with the block. And as you come more open, if you know that you come in, that you don't need a block in this practice, then you certainly can just sit it to the side. But I'll go ahead and show it this way. We're gonna come to sitting just in front of the block. We're gonna place our hands on our calf muscles. We're gonna peel them out of the way to create space. And then we're gonna find a space to sit on that block. We're gonna bring the legs alongside the body vertically. And then we're just gonna come into a mono seated. So coming into that space where you can just find your tailbone rooted into your supports and breathe. And then come back into the conscious awareness of breathing into the heart space, breathing, expanding the lungs, expanding our breathing capacity. Good. And we're gonna to begin to bring the heart, the hands to heart space. We're gonna inhale the hands up through the midline. And as you exhale, celebrate the beginning of a beautiful day. We're gonna go move through two. And last one here. And release. We're gonna bring the arms up overhead. And we're gonna to begin to cross the right arm under the left, placing the hands either on the shoulders, or you can begin to bring the palms together, coming into eagle arms. So again, coming into some of those longer held postures. So the shoulders roll back and down. If your hands are together, see if you can line the fingertips, the elbows, and the knees all in one straight line, right down the midsection of the body. Mindful breathing. And as you come into your yin practice, you really utilize the breath. So I want you to imagine as you're really breathing deeply into the body, as we become into certain focal areas on the body, if you begin to bring more awareness into that, you're feeling more sensation. I want you to imagine moving the breath into those spaces. As you inhale, drink, letting the breath move into those spaces. As you release the breath, imagine those spaces just releasing with the breath. So directed breath, moving those areas of attention and focus and letting those areas release just by breathing. Now on the next inhale, we're gonna to begin to intensify this just a bit by drawing the fingertips closer toward the ceiling. You're going to feel a deeper stretch across the upper thoracic spine, feeling it in the shoulders maybe. So again, your body is uniquely yours, and you may feel each one of these stretches just a little bit differently than I do. So just coming into your own sensations, looking for, again, awareness in the body, but not looking to move into a point of pain. So in our yin practice, we're looking for a sensation. It might be quite intense, but if it moves to a point of pain or strong discomfort, I want you to mindfully come out and see if you can come back in again until you can find that just right space. We'll take one more breath here. And as you exhale, draw the elbows toward the navel, create a slight rounding with the upper back. So just a gentle rounding. And then inhale, we go ahead and bring it back to center. Mindfully release, draw the arms up overhead, knees upward. And as you exhale, begin to wrap this time the left arm under the right, either placing the hands on the shoulders or bringing the palms together, coming into eagle arms on the other side. Take a moment to find this, and again, fingertips, elbows, and knees all in one line, so right down the center line of the body. You can find a drift or focal point. You can even let the eyes close if you want to move deeper within the body. You can even visualize the spaces that are opening as you breathe deeply into those spaces. And then on your next inhale, if you'd like to intensify this, you can begin to draw the fingertips closer toward the ceiling. You'll begin to feel more depth in this pose. So again, I want you to find the right depth for you. A few more rounds of breath here, just allowing yourself to move deeper within. The eyes can be soft or closed. The breath continues to deepen and allow your breath to move into those spaces that need that opening, that need that release. So directed breathing. Take one more breath here. And as you exhale, elbows move toward the navel, slight rounding with the upper body. Inhale brings us back to center. And then mindfully we begin to release. Arms move up overhead and exhale, release. Bring the palms forward. Open yourself wide to possibilities. And we're just gonna move through a few rounds of breath. 
opening up through the body. Palms move forward, open yourself wide to possibilities. Good. Right down to center, last three. Last two. And last breath. And we bring it right back down to heart space. Good. Go ahead and walk forward. We'll remove the block. Now, option here with your practice, if you want to move even deeper, we're going to continue on with Varasana. For those of you that have had enough of that, you can just take a few moments here and kind of stretch out through the body. For those of you who want to move deeper in your practice, you can continue to use the block or you can again place the hands on the calf muscles. Let the calf muscles roll out to the side, sitting in between the feet. So the feet are vertically alongside the body. And again, if you are working through injuries and you know this is not the best practice for you, then just take a few moments and move through the body as I continue to cue people who want to move deeper this morning. Again, we're going to take a moment here. Place the hands just gently on the legs. Shoulders roll back and down. And then you can stay here from that really strong stretch in the quads. Or for those who want to move deeper, you can begin to drop your hands down behind the body and just begin to gradually walk yourself down. If you're feeling this is a pretty strong stretch and you need to stop here, then you can certainly stop here. And if you need to come out, you can certainly come out. For those of you that feel like you have a little bit more and you want to move deeper, you can just begin to walk yourself down until you come all the way down to the floor. You can bring the arms up overhead. You can rest them at your side. So I'm just going to take a moment here, really feeling this really strong, deep stretch here. Pay attention to your body. If for any reason your body is objecting to this, I want you to come out of this very mindfully. So we come out the, just the way that we came in. So really feeling that strong stretch in the quads. So not as long a holding time here. Just letting your body come into this. About five more rounds of breath here. Last three, last two, and last breath. We come to the elbows, and we begin to just walk ourselves up the way that we came in. We go ahead and bring ourselves forward, and then for those of you that were just having a little bit of mindful movement, you can go ahead and join us now. I'm going to stretch a leg or so back just to release those really strongly bound positions. And then we're just going to find a little bit of fluid movement, so coming into some cat and cow. As we come into cat and cow, we have wrists directly underneath the shoulders, the knees about hip distance apart, directly underneath the hips. We come into cat and cow, so breathing into lower abdominals and then sending the breath all the way up through the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Pause here, and on your next inhale, draw the chest through the gate of the shoulders, allowing the belly to release to the earth, head and neck move with the spine. So moving through a few rounds of cat and cow. And really incorporating the breath work with it. So imagine the breath ebbing and flowing with your movements. As you continue to move between cat and cow, if there's any other movement your body's calling out for, you can begin to come into some hip glides, maybe coming into some hip circles, coming into some C curves. So whatever feels really good to you right now, we need to take a few moments here and just really release with your body. We're going to come into our next longer held posture into child's pose. So about three more rounds of breath here, just finding some movement for your body. Last three, last two, and last one. So bringing it into a child's pose. Now we're going to be holding it a little bit longer in this child's pose. So if you know that you like a little bit of support underneath the knees, or you want some support for the head. So again, it's about finding that just right space for you. Even rolling a blanket and placing it behind the knees is a nice place to add a little bit of added comfort support. So go ahead and bring your big toes together. The knees can be close together, wide apart, or somewhere in the middle. And we'll begin to gradually release the hips toward the heels. I want you to start by walking your arms forward. So we're going to create an active child's pose to start with. Begin to release the chin or the forehead to your mat. And if it doesn't quite release, again, you have ways to elevate bringing the ground up to your body if you need to. And then once you've moved into that just a bit, you have several options for releasing your arms. You can stay exactly where you are and active if that feels good. You can release your arms to your side bodies, coming into a surrendering child's pose. 
So you can place your hands in prayer position behind the back of the head. You can also stack your hands and rest your forehead on your stacked hands. So you've got a lot of options for placement. I want you to find the one that feels right. You can try one of them, all of them, or if you know where you want to go with your favorite space, go ahead and go there. You've got a longer hold time here, so give yourself some time to come into this in a space that you know you can hold comfortably for a longer period of time. As we come into this space, begin to feel the ebb and flow of breath continuing to move through the body. We've created space in the lower abdominals for deeper diaphragmatic breathing. So again, connecting with that deeper belly breathing. As you inhale, expand the lungs from side to side, front to back, top to bottom. Open up your mouth, H-A-Ha breath out. Really let the breath flow out of the body. Now this time we're going to use this as a detoxifying breath. As you inhale, creating space in mind and body. As you exhale, release out anything that doesn't serve you. Just let it go. Whatever it might be in the body, anything holding you back from something better, let it release with the breath. So we're going to move through a few more rounds of this deeper belly breathing. And last one here, really side out. Now we're going to continue to stay in child's pose. We're going to come into another twist. We're going to begin to walk the right arm under the left. The right shoulder comes to your mat. And you have place, you can just start here. Now if your head and neck don't come all the way down, you need to place a blanket or a block underneath the head and neck to bring the earth up to you. I want to start here and stay here for just a moment. You're going to feel that right shoulder blade rolling back and down. And again, try to find a sense of ease and comfort in your body. So again, if you find the awareness, maybe it's quite intense. Intensity is okay, as long as you're not moving into a point of pain. Pain is a way, your body's way of letting you know this isn't the right space for you. So really observing that in your body, respecting your body, and coming into safe practice. Now, once you're in here, you can stay exactly like this. Or if you want to bring the left hand behind the body, you can bring it behind the body in a bind. This is another favorite placement for your arm. You can certainly go there. We've got about five rounds of breath here. Eyes can be soft or closed. Last three. Last two. And last breath. Let's go ahead and bring that left arm back to center. We'll mindfully begin to release. And we're going to move to the other side this time. So this time, left arm crosses under right. Palm faces upward. Left shoulder blade comes down. And your gaze moves to the left side of your mat, the right side of your mat, sorry. And if the head and neck don't come all the way down, again, you can certainly place a blanket, a block, or a little bit of added support to bring the earth up to you. Continue to follow the ebb and flow of the breath. So really taking advantage of this bigger opportunity to allow the breath to move into the body. So as you inhale, feel the expansion lungs from side to side, front to back, top to bottom. Audibly or silently, release the breath, let it go. So using your detox line breath, let that breath release the body, let it go. Again, if you did so on the other side, you want to bring the right arm around the body in a bind. You have that option to come into a bind if that feels good to you. Last three. Last two. And last breath. Let's go ahead and bring that right arm back to center. Mindfully walk your arms out in front. And then we'll begin to walk our hands back toward the body. And we'll begin to extend the legs out. Just take a moment here and release. And then go ahead and come back to center. So we're going to begin to come into Gomukhasana cow face pose. And we're going to be using a strap. Now, if you don't have a strap, you can improvise again by using a belt or a piece of string even. And if you don't have that, then you can just follow along using um, watching your body and doing the best that you can with what you have. So we're going to come into Dandasana with the shoulder blades rolling back and down, arms resting your sides, allowing the heart space to move through the gate of the shoulders, and finding a drift to your focal point, just finding a nice gaze into the body. You'll feel that strong activation of the back line of the legs. Pressing e equally between the ball and the heel. 
And in this space, if your hamstrings are still tight, you can certainly take a bend to the knees. You can even roll a blanket underneath the knees for added support. I'm going to take one more breath here. And we're going to begin to bend through the left leg. And we're going to cross the left leg over the right, stacking the knees. So we're going to come into, we're going to start with half Gomakasana. And this is a nice way to come into if your hips are a little bit tight. This is a gentle way that you can come into this practice. And again, if the knees don't directly stack, you can certainly release the sole of the foot. So in time, gradually coming into the knees stack one on top of the other. But again, I want you to work with your body. If you are working through injuries, please be mindful and come into a safe practice today. Once you're there, you're just gonna stay here for a while, letting your body come into this. And then we'll begin to mindfully place, if you have a strap and you know you need one, um, we're gonna come into that more complete pose. So we're gonna begin to bring the strap, the belt or the string or nothing at all onto your left shoulder. You're going to begin to bring the left arm out to the side, right, directly out in front, palm faces upward. We're going to bend the elbow and place the palm on your left shoulder blade. We're going to internally rotate through the right arm, swing it behind the body, and you can reach for the fingertips. If your fingertips don't quite get there, you can reach for the strap. If you don't have a strap, a belt, or a string, then you can just place the hands gently on the back. So in this posture, we're beginning to bring arm directly toward the side of the body. Your gaze is straight away and elbow in time begins to move its way up toward the ceiling. Tailbone roots down, spine is neutral. If you have a leg extended out, keep it nice and active. So lots going on here. And then I'll begin to bring, give you the option to move deeper if you choose to. So I'm gonna stay here for just a moment or two, letting the upper back release into this posture. Go ahead and give your head a gentle shake from side to side and front to back. So give yourself permission to release to the head, neck, and shoulders. About three more rounds of breath here. Last two, and last one. We're gonna release, we're gonna come back in on this side one more time. And you're gonna have the option to stay here, or if you wanna add more to your practice, you can begin to coil the right leg in toward the body. So this is coming into the full practice. Now, if you're not there this morning, again, you can continue to leave that leg extended out. So I want you to find that just right space for your body. Very strong pose here, but coming into your yin, giving yourself time and attention where you need to. Again, we're gonna begin to inhale the left arm out, bend the elbow and place the palm on your left shoulder blade. Internal rotation with the right arm, swing it behind the body. And again, if the fingertips don't quite meet or you have the strap there, again, coming into that space that you need. So beginning to bring that opening into the upper body. Gaze is straight away. And again, you're keeping the arm as close to the body as you're able. Elbow begins to reach closer up toward the ceiling. So this is very progressive movement. Give yourself some time. Keep the breath flowing into the body. You feel those spaces in your body. You just want to resist. Breathe into it and encourage your body to release with your breath. And then that's a time of just surrender. Your body just allows itself to release into this. Last three, last two, and last one. Let's go ahead and release it out. A little internal and external rotation, just releasing through those shoulders. And then we'll mindfully begin to release the right leg out, uncross the legs to come back into Dandasana, and then go ahead and just create some movement from side to side, front to back, rotating through the ankles and just creating a little bit of release. And then come back to stillness. We come back into Dandasana, letting the shoulder blades roll back and down, releasing your hands alongside your body, pressing lightly into the earth, raising the hips. We come back into that long spine. And then go ahead and release. We'll bend through the right leg and cross it over, stacking the knees one on top of the other, coming into that half variation of Gomakasana cow face pose. Now, again, if this is a part of your practice, then you might be here and in time you'll work toward that. So again, it's about finding the opening in your body. We're gonna come into that first space. We'll release and come back a little bit deeper if you choose to. So again, placing the strap this time on the right shoulder. If you need the strap, if you're just gonna come into it with your body, you don't have those props, certainly fine. Go ahead and inhale the right arm out, bend the elbow and place it on the right shoulder blade. Internal rotation with the left arm, swing it behind the body and reach for the fingertips, your strap, your string, your belt, or whatever you have, or maybe nothing, just releasing the hands on the back. 
And then in time, you begin to bring the arm to the side of your body, walking the elbow closer up toward the ceiling. Spine stays nice and long. Extended leg is nice and active. So intense, deep stretches here, but something definitely doable. I mean, you can take, you can come at your practice wherever you are. It's all about progression. So we come into our practice each and every day as a practice. And some days are better than others, and we're just being bringing that awareness. So being very present with your body, just loving your body, maybe not loving every pose, but trying to move toward acceptance of some different postures. So finding a sense of humility in your body, in your practice, I should say. We've got about five more rounds of breath here. So seeing where you can intensify it. Oops. Last three, last two, and last one. Let's go ahead and release. And then if you want to stay exactly where you are, or know that you always have options in your home practice to find a little bit of movement, you can continue on with me if you'd like to. So if you want to add that full practice, you can begin to coil the left leg in toward the body. In this pose, the knees are stacked and the feet are resting at your side. So coming into that, moving toward that ideal position, but if you're not there, if you're a little bit off, you know, that's okay, we're working toward that. So creating that acceptance in our bodies and working toward those deeper, deeper positions. So again, coming into the arm position, we'll begin to inhale the right arm out, bend the elbow and place it on your right shoulder blade. Internal rotation with the left arm, swing it behind the body, and it each for your string, your belt, your strap, or your fingertips, or nothing at all. And again, progressively beginning to walk your hands closer together, arm, your right arm is close to your side, head, neck, and shoulders, nice and neutral, elbow reaches up toward the ceiling. So taking a few moments here to just find your breath, come deeper into this pose, and again, feel those spaces where your body really wants to resist, very, very deeply going in, and then just not holding your breath, breathing into it, and then just letting your body release with your breath. Last three, last two, and last breath here. Let's go ahead and mindfully release. A little internal and external rotation. Go ahead and release that left leg and uncoil, and we'll create just a little bit of movement. The next pose we'll be coming into is Jean Yusrasasana, head of the knee. We're going to again begin to bend with the left knee. And with this practice, you can have a block or a blanket ready in case you need it. And then inhale, and as you exhale, allow the left knee to fall to the side. Now if your knees to come all the way down, go ahead and place support. So bring the ground up to your body. That's why we use supports. Supports and props are excellent for really coming deeper into your practice. So never feel that if you're using props that they're a crutch. They're certainly not. We're gonna go ahead and begin to realign the body. So we have external rotation as the left knee falls out to the side. Our right leg's extended out from our body, right down the midline. Shoulder blades are rolling back and down. And we're just going to take a moment here and press our hands lightly into the earth. Now you can stay here in your practice, and this is a beautiful place to stay. Or if you want to begin to add more, you can begin to walk your hands slowly down the length of the leg. Keeping the spine long for as long as you're able. And as you come into these forward folds, you want to be very mindful. If your low back begins to talk to you, it's letting you know that your hamstrings are extended as far as they're going to, because spine and hamstrings have a connection right down here, and that's where you feel it in your low back. So give yourself time to allow your muscles to, to release into these poses. So that's the really great part of the yin practice is we're, there's nowhere else we need to be. We're just being in the moment. We're giving ourselves the time to come into these deeper spaces. If you have a little bit more, you can continue to walk down the length of the leg. And then as we come into our longer held time here, you can really begin to release the forehead toward the leg. Now, if that's too strong of a stretch to you, you can again begin to bring things onto the leg to bring the earth to you. So blanket, blocks, or maybe you're just right here and that's okay. So we've got a little longer hold time here. We've got at least five rounds of breath to really find that nice opening in the hamstring. You can even interlace the hands behind the back of the foot. Letting the shoulders roll back and down. Last three. Last two. And last breath. 
We'll mindfully begin to walk ourselves back to center. Place the hand on the outside edge of the left knee and draw it center. Bring our legs back to center. Take a moment here to release. And then we'll begin to bend through the right knee, bringing it to center, and then allow your right knee to fall out to the side. And again, if the right knee doesn't come all the way down, please support it. So bring the ground up to you. We're going to come back to center, bring the tailbone into the earth. Spine is nice and long. Let's take a moment here, just allowing that right hip to open. And then again, we'll begin to find those mindful movements, walking down the length of the left leg. And you keep walking until you feel your spine naturally begin to round. And we're going to go through this very mindfully, very slowly. So we don't want to rush into our practice. We want to give ourselves that time. So we set aside just enough time to find our yin today. Pay attention to your low back. So your low back begins to talk to you. It's letting you know that you've probably gone as far as you're going to right now. So give yourself plenty of time to breathe. As you inhale, you create space in the body. And as you exhale, you create that beautiful depth. If you feel you have a little bit more, you can continue to come into this. Maybe releasing the forehead to the leg. Maybe interlacing the hands behind the back, the sole of the foot. Shoulders are soft. We've got at least five breath out here. Last three. Last two. And last one. And certainly if you want to stay in one of those spaces longer, it's your practice, you can stay there. And then walking yourself back to center. Go ahead and place the hand on the outside edge of the knee and go ahead and extend your legs nice together. Now we're going to take this now into Vodakanasana. I lost my words for just a moment. So bound ankle or butterfly. And we're going to do that by bending through both knees and placing the soles of the feet together. Now, as you come into butterfly or baddha konasana, you can find that just right placement for your body. If your hips are still a little bit tight this morning, you can draw the feet further away from the body. And if you want a little bit more, you can begin to direct the heels closer toward the body. So it's really about finding the opening in your body, wherever you are. And we're gonna interlace the hands, make a nice weave, and place them around the feet we're going to allow the shoulders to roll back and down and let the chest draw through the gate of the shoulders. The spine is nice and long and the tailbone roots. And as we come into this practice, don't think of forcing the knees down. Imagine energy coming out of the knees and coming to the side wall. So we're really extending here. So we're not forcing the knees down. We're releasing, extending outward. One more breath here. This feels really good today. Now I want you to go ahead and release your hands behind the body. Let your shoulders roll back and down. Now don't lean into your arms. I want you to use your arms as a prop to help encourage your spine to lengthen. Shoulder blades are rolling back and down. This gives you a little bit more opportunity to open up through the chest. So a lot of emphasis today on opening up through the heart space and the chest, really enhancing our breathing capacity. So as we're bringing social awareness into our practice today, we really want to be very, very healthy in our bodies and our minds and really be very focused on really good, deep, nice breathing. So purification of body and mind using good, clean breathe, breath to really keep us nice and strong. Got about three more rounds of breath here. Last two. And last one, we're going to take this into a forward fold. Now, as you come into a forward fold, again, very strong in the body. So depending on where you are in your practice, if you feel that you need to move your feet a little further away from the body, that's certainly fine. So I want you to find that just right space for you. And then we're going to, if you want to make that weave with your hands and place around your feet, that's an option for this. Or you can just place your hands in front of the body. We're going to inhale, creating space. And as you exhale, micro movement. So coming into that gentle release or enhance, depending on where you are again in your practice. Mindful movement, we come deeper and deeper. Now when you get to the point again where you, you feel that nice tug in your low back, it's letting you know you've gone deep enough wherever you are. Now remember, if you have some Tupperware or a block or even a blanket, you can place it in front of the feet and you can begin to rest your third eye position on that support. 
Now, again, if you have a little more flexibility and you want to move deeper, you can continue to release your head all the way down to your feet, if that's where you are today. That might not be your goal today, but it could be sometime. Hands can be in prayer position behind the back of the head. Extend it out for the body, stack. So again, find that just right space for your body. We've got about five rounds of breath here. Last three, last two, and last one. Let's go ahead and walk ourselves back to center. Hands to the outside edge of the knees, and then draw your knees together, closing like a book. We'll extend our legs out and go ahead and release. So the last seated posture we'll have today will be Paschimottanasana forward fold. And again, nice, intense, deep pose here. So going again at your own level. So again, we come back into Dandasana, staff pose. Shoulders roll back and down. Chest draws to the gate of the shoulders, pressing evenly between the ball and heel. And we begin to gently walk our hands down the length of our legs. Micro movements here, when you feel that strong pull in, in your hamstrings, maybe your low back, it's letting you know you're there. And then you just pause and observe. Maybe you have a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And it's that very mindful movement. You don't have anywhere else to be but exactly where you are. Be grounded, stay in the moment, keep your breath flowing. Last three, last two, and last breath. Let's go ahead and walk it back to center. Swing the legs out to the side, and let's go ahead and just release. Extending a leg or two back. And then one more nice opening for the chest. We're going to come into melting heart before we come down onto our back. So in melting heart, the body stays in neutral, so in table position. So you want to keep that alignment with the knee to hip alignment. And then you just begin to walk your arms forward. Now, options again, you can place a blanket, a block, or a piece of tuple, or whatever book underneath the chest is the floor, you know, bring the floor up to you. And you can just keep walking yourself down. Now the chest may or may not come all the way down. We're just going to hang out here for just a breath or two. Chin comes down, maybe forehead. Last three, last two, and last one. Let's go ahead and walk it back to center. And this time we'll go ahead and release all the way down onto the mat. As we get to be moving towards Shavasana, make sure you have everything that you need for Shavasana. So if you need some added support, blankets, socks, Whatever it is in your practice, maybe you need a glass of wine. So have those things handy as you need them. And then we'll go ahead and mindfully begin to come down onto the back. Arms extended out, palms facing each other. And then we'll come down mindfully, one vertebra time, until you come all the way down to your mat. Go ahead and bring the arms up overhead, extending nice and long with the body. Wiggle through the fingers, wiggle through the toes, opening up as much as you're able. We'll take one more big, beautiful breath here. Oh, I'm exposing myself. And then draw the knees into the body. Go ahead and rock from side to side. And as we come into the last part of your practice, beginning to move towards Shavasana. So if there's any kind of movement your body needs, you can begin to find that movement in your body. Maybe bring it into plow pose or coming into shoulder span. So just having a little bit of movement or any kind of pose that we didn't reach today. So just take your moment to here. And then let's, let's go ahead and come into some windshield wipers from side to side. Just kind of release through the low back. And then once you're even on both sides, we begin to bring this into stillness. So as you come into Shavasana, you can come into the Shavasana that's best for your body today. Maybe it's rolling down to the side, maybe curling up with a pillow. It could also be on the belly for belly down Shavasana. Or you can come in for traditional Shavasana with the body extended fully on your mat. In traditional 
Shavasana. The shoulders roll back and down, gently tuck underneath the body. The palms face upward and the feet gently roll out to the side. As you come into the space, begin to wiggle through the fingers and the toes and release any residual energy from the body. Allow the eyes to soften and close, once again closing off outside distractions and drawing your awareness inward. As you draw your awareness in, we come back to the breath once again. Allowing the breath to move a little deeper into the base of the lungs. Expanding lungs from side to side, front to back, top to bottom. Audibly or silently release the breath, let it go. And we're going to complete our yin practice with a guided meditation. So I want you to begin to bring your arms slightly out to the side, palms facing upward. As you continue to breathe, I want you to redirect your breath and awareness into the palm of your right hand. From the palm of your right hand, I want you to take that awareness to the sole of your right foot. From your right foot to your left foot. From your left foot to your left palm. From your left palm to your right palm. From your right palm to your left palm. From your left palm to the sole of your left foot. From the sole of the left foot to the sole of the right foot. From the sole of the right foot to the right palm. Begin to bring the palms together at heart space. Come back to your intention. Feel the energy of your heart beating beneath. Begin to draw the hands up through the midline, extending long with the body. And as you exhale, release the arms back to your side once again. You have arrived in the most beautiful, perfect place of rest, of stillness, of deep focus. Now you have arrived, Shavasana. You can stay here for as long as you need to. This is a time you've created for yourself. This is your yin for Friday. From my heart to yours, Yogi. Namaste.